Hello, family of God. This is Vicki and Chuck. Thank you for joining us today here in Vineyard Tabernacle. It is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024. Today I'm going to read chapter 2 from the book of 1 Peter. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the stone cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor, Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you are sin, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if, when you do good and suffer for it, you endure? This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls.
Father, we praise your name. You are high and holy. In every way, you are the set-apart one. You are the holy God. we thank you that you are so gracious that you would give us reassurance and instruction throughout the word the reminders that you are holy and you want us to be holy as well you want us to walk as those who are holy you suffered and you said we will suffer how could we ever want to have it any other way? Because we're not better than you, Lord. And while we understand that we're not earning our salvation because there is only one who made it possible for us to be saved, and that is our Savior, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, we are also aware that we want to look like you. We want to be children of our Father. And Lord, you know that doesn't mean I'm inviting the suffering. It simply means that the servant is not greater than his master. And if they've done things to you, things will be done to us as well. We thank you for the fires that we have to walk through to test our souls, to, to purify us. To burn away all the dross, all the selfishness, all the self-righteousness, all of the pride, all of the rebellion. We thank you, Father God, for the fires. For in them we learn humility and obedience. We thank you, Father, that even for these words, Even for these words in these few scriptures I read, you instruct us in what it looks like, what our lives will look like when we are yours. And we can console those parts of ourselves that get all upset and worried and instead rejoice in the knowledge that you love us so much that you prepare us all through your word and you tell us this is what my people will this is what my people will endure this is what my people will look like he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by his wounds you have been healed for you are straying like sheep but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls almighty god we thank you for drawing us draw us closer lord please continue to draw thank you for being so patient with us for we are the dust of the earth and you are the Lord God Almighty, the creator of everything, including the dust. We pray for your people everywhere today, for every single person you're calling. We pray for ears to hear the call of your spirit that people would turn, even those of us who in any way have turned away. Thank you, Lord. We pray again for all of your animals as well. For everyone who's being abused or tormented in any way, we pray for all of those who are in wars around the world who are suffering help god help 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 lord 
help. Tell us and show us what our part is so that we may be a blessing while we walk this earth every single day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.